It is time. It is time for Weather for Weather Geeks. We're back here on this uh, Monday. We didn't do a Weather Geeks video on Friday. And then uh, stepped away from the weather a little bit over the weekend. And boy, did things change when it came to the uh, Thanksgiving forecast. A one-day Arctic intrusion is set to head our way just in time for the holiday, making for a much colder Thanksgiving forecast than I had out on Friday. We'll talk about Thanksgiving in just a second. First, a quick review of today. Gloomy November weather once again. Now, we picked up officially half an inch worth of snow this morning at the Youngstown Warren Airport. Local half an inch or so uh, amounts were somewhat common earlier today. We had these flurries around for a lot of the morning, and as you'll see on this time lapse from Columbia and along the traffic circle, the ground gets whitened briefly. There it is. A few slick spots out there this morning. And then we were just left with flurries and some spotty light rain and drizzle for a lot of the afternoon. Just kind of looked like a Monday, kind of looked like a November day once again. It's one of our cloudiest months of the year, typically. And today was no exception. Not much going on on Storm Tracker 21 uh, just before 7 o'clock this evening, although some pockets of drizzle will remain a possibility. All right, our big story as we head into the uh, rest of the week is going to be the cold. The cold is building. It's getting set to come south. And already this evening, it's near zero uh, along the U.S.-Canadian border. Three in Fargo, four in International Falls. Then once you head up into Canada, uh, Big Trout Lake, <laughs> nine below. Churchill, minus 18. So, yeah, this is pure Arctic air sitting up here. And chunks of this are going to come south as we go through the next handful of days. And the biggest chunk is coming our way just in time for the holiday. Now, back here in the near term, I think tomorrow will be a little bit similar to today in that it's just going to be a cloudy day. It's going to be brisk. And occasionally there's going to be some flurries around, and especially during the second half of the morning into the first half of the afternoon, there could be a ground whitening snow shower in some spots. I can't even rule out some local accumulations of up to an inch. If you get under a beefy snow shower for 20 minutes, you might end up getting an inch on the grass. Um, but uh, that'll be the exception. Most of us will see no accumulation or maybe, you know, the grass in your cars get whitened occasionally. Maybe a few secondary roads occasionally get a little dusting. Overall, not expecting huge impacts from this on Tuesday, but again, be careful out there if you're on the roads. Uh, our highest chances for snow will be late morning, early afternoon. The bigger deal, I think, as far as snow goes is on Wednesday. Now, this is going to be another day where it's certainly not going to snow all day. And it's going to be very, very changeable, the conditions across the valley. This is going to be a, a game of chance, really. Some places may not see hardly a flake of snow on Wednesday. Some places might have not only a ground whitening squall, but a bonafide whiteout for five minutes. It's going to be an Arctic front heading our way Wednesday, and these fronts, these kind of Arctic fronts, are famous for producing variable conditions across the area. It could be one of those days where uh, you're driving along, everything's fine, and then boom, the visibility becomes a quarter of a mile or less. Uh, this may be especially problematic in the morning up to about lunchtime. I think these snow showers and flurries become less numerous as we get into Wednesday afternoon, and then high pressure builds in and gives us that uh, frigid but sunny day coming up on Thanksgiving. All right, so temperatures across the Northeast. This is an impressive air mass. This is more like the middle of winter. Uh, Thursday uh, morning, Thanksgiving morning, we'll wake up in the teens. Not far to the east, though. There's going to be some single-digit numbers. I mean, once you're east of I-79, especially over towards Oil City, Franklin, Clearfield, Dubois, uh, Indiana, Pennsylvania, State College, Altoona, Belfont, places like that. Yeah, it's going to be down to the single digits, I think, Thursday morning. And then we'll do it again Friday morning. In fact, it could be even colder in some parts of New England Friday morning. Single digits in places like Scranton and Albany and Syracuse and Watertown. And uh, even over towards Nashua, New Hampshire, and up into Maine. Now, locally, again, we'll be in the teens. That's certainly cold enough. And there'll be enough of a breeze that we'll have to talk about the wind chills. Now, it won't be super windy on Thanksgiving. In fact, the wind will be fairly calm. But just a little bit of a breeze will create wind chills Thursday morning down in the single digits. Not much better than the lower 20s in the afternoon. Then again, while the wind won't be crazy Friday morning, a two or three mile per hour wind can create wind chills a handful of degrees cooler than the air temperatures, so 0 to 10 above for wind chills for Black Friday shoppers Friday morning. Good luck to you. I will not be out there amongst you. All right, our Thanksgiving forecast has been updated to look like this. We've got shivering turkeys on the graphic now, and our uh, afternoon high temperature, 27 degrees. That seems pretty cold for Thanksgiving, right? Well, yes, indeed. When we look back at the record books, the coldest Thanksgiving on record going back to 1930 uh, was 25, just five years ago. Back in 2013, we had a cold, cold Thanksgiving. In fact, the coldest on record going back to 1930. Uh, we'll probably be close to this, maybe a little bit warmer, but still uh, in that kind of top three or four coldest Thanksgivings on record conversation for us. Uh, some other Thanksgiving Day extremes, the warmest 68. We had a warm one uh, a few years ago in 2015. We had 63. 
Uh, rainiest was not that long ago, back in 2010, and actually our snowiest was not that long ago, back in 2005. So the 21st century has been notable for some interesting weather on Thanksgiving. All right, so it is going to turn a little bit warmer over the weekend beyond Thanksgiving. We're talking 40s to maybe close to 50 before the weekend is through. But uh, as I've been alluding to now for a while, uh, definitely strong signaling here as we get into the very end of November and into December that it looks like a cold and potentially stormy pattern across this zone through here. Kind of a classic El Nino signature to the storm track as we go into uh, early December. What I mean by that is typically in an El Nino, whether it's a weak one, a moderate one, whether it's centrally based, east based, a lot of times in El Nino, you get a very active storm track across the southern tier of states and then going up the eastern seaboard. And that's the way the storm track looks in early December. So that puts us in a zone where if everything works out right, we could be dealing with a fair amount of storminess early in December. And if it's cold enough, that means snow. So more updates on the longer range coming up on future editions of Weather for Weather Geeks. Thanks for watching this Monday night edition. And I'll have your full forecast coming up tonight on 21 News at 11.